Welcome to episode number 309 of Category 5 Technology TV. So nice having you here. It's Tuesday, the 20th of August, 2013. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Hello, world. Hey, Hill. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. How are you doing? Oh, you know, keeping it real. Summer going good? Very good. How's Very my good. tan? Working on right. it. Look at me. Look at Not me. I'm bad. almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we engage your tan from your head. Yeah, like how, much, how much how much sun. glare is there? How much shine on your screens at home? I'm doing all right. Put on your all glasses, right. people. <laughs> Coming up in the newsroom this episode, we've got a lot happening in the world of tech news. Nice. Microsoft and Google are battling it out over Google's suspension of the Windows Phone YouTube app. Uh-oh. Always quarreling. Those two. Those two. Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook wall was breached by a user wanting to get his attention about a security exploit. Is that mm. laden with... Yeah, no, it wasn't me. Who knows? We'll Could find out who it was and what they did. <laughs> the exploit... Or is, <laughs> I just said exploit. The upcoming follow-up to the hit game Minecraft has been cancelled. No. I know. You're so disappointed. <sighs> and lastly, some of the ads you are seeing on YouTube might not actually be from YouTube. So stick around. We're going to discuss these stories in a little bit. That's insane. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Okay, tonight we are going to tackle a question from Pals98 who wrote us this week and said, is there any way to send notification pop-ups to computers on my home network? Well, there is. We're going to take a look at how we can do it on both Linux and Windows systems tonight. Um, so don't go anywhere. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we also have a prize to give away. You know how I love prizes. Hello. Give me, give me. So make sure you are in the chat room. That's right, the chat room, um, in order to qualify for such a fabulous prize. Final hint. What is this prize, Robbie? Mm, we'll talk all about it mm, I after can't the wait. break. We'll be right back. It's going to be an awesome show. Don't go anywhere. This is Category 5 Technology TV. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm here with Hillary Rumble. Hello. The one and only. Everyone. Hello. Ha! I have an iPod Touch, Hill. Ooh, cool, ha -ha. dude. I heard yours got stolen. Yeah, well, do you know what? Let's just rub some salt in my wounds. Oh, you? I'll do better. Got a letter here from Rob uh, Gore. It says, hey, Hillary. Hey. This is an 8 gig iPod touch that I wish to give to you. <gasps> what? It's On to Earth? replace the one that was stolen from your car oh. by those punk kids. <laughs> I'm so moved. Uh, he says, you. I've included a new set of earbuds, which should work. These came with a tablet I recently got and haven't used. I hope oh. that you enjoy it. From Robert Gorzinski, a.k.a. Rob Gore in the chat room, Thank Melbourne, you. Australia. Oh. Thank you so much, Rob Gore, for thinking of that Hill. That is so thoughtful. I could Look cry, but I'm not going to because that makes for bad television. I no. love our community, how everybody comes together. That is together. so and kind, The honestly. community and some of the people here at the at the show also came together and got you some iTunes I cards know. and things, so you're going to be able to load it up with music, get you up and running. I'm so yes. excited. I have been without music for so long, and this is a special treasure. Thank you for thinking of me all the way in Australia. You the best. Thank Way to go, you. Rob Gore. Aww. You're officially the best in Hillary Rumble's books. Mm, thank thanks, buddy. You. Thank and thanks you to our community. So much. Thank you to our community uh, for supporting us. Mm -hmm. um, this week has been tremendous. We've received a fair number of donations toward um, just funding the show, and yeah. we've uh, talked a little bit about the upcoming renovations that I'm really, really looking forward to. 
Um, I did mention it on a previous show, but we got our quote from the renovator, uh, Ooh, like the, the nice. person who's going to do the work for us. And he designs it, and he's got it all in 3D CAD and all that. Cool. And it, it is more expensive than we had anticipated. So mm. um, so it's really just a, you know, it's baby steps to saving up money so that we can get that done. And, and what that means to you, the viewers, is just simply that we're going to have our own space. It's going to be soundproofed. It's going to be, um, mm. whole, you know, the, the whole goal is to have um, uh, better quality and, and be able to do this on an ongoing basis because nice. we're coming up i don't know if you realize but our seventh season starts at the end of next month Wild. and so as we <laughs> approach that i'm starting to you know get excited about mm -hmm. uh what we're going to be doing over the next six seven eight ten years and and so we really do need that uh, a little bit of space because right now mm. if you don't know we're actually broadcasting from the basement of my house and there comes a point <laughs> where you know season seven is beginning folks and and we do need our own space we're at that point so i appreciate all the support that came in this week thank you very very much uh for mm -hmm. sending in a donation if you care to send in a donation if you're able um of course every, you got to realize that every little bit helps because oh, it, yeah. if let's say 500 viewers which is a very small percentage of the actual viewership of the show. Uh, but if 500 people were all to give 25 to $50, then there's the renovation yeah. project all paid for, uh, which is astounding when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, a, a reasonably small donation with more people doing the same thing can really have a huge impact. So we appreciate it. But it's uh, cat5.tv slash C if you care to uh, participate in that at this point. We appreciate it very much. I want to say hello to our new viewers. Hello, I've got a list everyone. right in front of us. The list is growing. Okay. Want to take turns? Sure. Hey, Kron. Welcome also to Gizmotosis. Oritrons. Welcome. Nice to have you joining us here at Category 5. And we also want to say hello to Nuts11222. Sans Serif. I love your font. <laughs> Bill Crawford, 1956. Hector. Ooh, C Down Sprint. We welcome you too. Raphael Rods03. Nice to have you joining our community. And Twinkle2. Love your song. <laughs> Pals62565. Welcome to the show. And we also want to welcome Gamelo Claudio too. Nero. And. Enemy <laughs> of the Federation. Uh oh. It's a whole dun, other dun, can of worms, dun. but we're glad you're you're watching. <laughs> Love um, having you here. Also glad that Saber said ninety one is watching too. And finally, a new registration on our website, category five TV, Laura and Tim. Very nice to have you joining us on the show as well. Thank you for registering on our website. Uh, you can do so at, it's absolutely free to be a part of this community, category5.tv. Head on over there and you'll get some extra bonus features. When you are a registered viewer, for example, yes. you can win stuff. True. What do we got tonight? We've got another one of these newer technology, seven port USB 2.0 hubs with four amp power supply. This has got dedicated 2.1 amp output. So if you want to charge a device, it has a lot of power uh, to it. So make sure that you get into the chat room. It's really, you know, I can't stress enough. Get into the chat room. Drawbot is going to be joining us there in just a couple of moments time. And uh, so that's what we're giving away tonight. Yes. We'll send it anywhere in the world. Because we love you. Whole wide world. Did I mention you got to be a registered viewer on the website? But you got to get in the chat room. Don't worry if you're not registered. Get in the chat room. Mm -hmm. We're live. Uh, go to category 5tv Join the chat room there. Uh, you can go to interact and go in there. You can go into category five on free note. You can get in that way. And then if you win, you can register on the website. It's all golden. Easy peasy. Easy. All right. Before we give it away, uh, if you have. A problem with your computer. I'm trying to. Well, I guess no, you weren't here last week. Nobody was here no. last week. It was all me. Mm. The vacation special. It was just <laughs> me and a camera and the community. Uh, it really, Andrew Jameson kind of hit the nail on the head that it kind of felt like the olden days when mm -hmm. it was just me doing the show yep. from the basement studio and things were pretty, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a lot less sophisticated back then. But as far as the community interaction went, it, it you know, the the response from that episode has been pretty astounding. I appreciate all your cool. emails and comments That's on YouTube awesome. and commenting below and, and all that. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, it really kind of gave me a feel of, huh, you know, this, this is really what it used to feel like to do the show way back when. And, you know, things have changed because we've grown. And we, but it, at the same time, it kind of reminds me that you know, we, we really need to be that intimate with 
our community. So uh, one of the things that I really want to step up is uh, the ability to actually help you with your computer trouble. So if you're running Linux, Windows, uh, get TeamViewer installed, and we'll actually use TeamViewer as best we can to get into your system and, and help oh, you with the problems cool. that you're having. So if that's something that interests you, uh, make yeah. sure that you install TeamViewer and then just private message us in the chat room. Also, you can call us 254-522-8588. Easy. Give us a call on the cat phone. Cat phone. Yeah. All right. So, we ready for this? Oh, yes. We've got... This is the newer technology, mm -hmm. USB 2.0 hub. It will take a single USB port and turn it into seven ports. That is very cool. It's got dedicated mm -hmm. power, so it's not going to... Uh, draw power from the USB port on your computer. That's fantastic. That is so cool. Here we go. Drawbot is in the chat room. Oh wow! And doing its thing. Doing its thing. Hey everybody, good luck. Good luck, and may Drawbot be ever in your favor. <laughs> and of course, uh, we're going to send this anywhere in the world. I don't care where you live, folks. If you win this thing, all you have to do is email us live at category5.tv send us your address and uh, we're going to ship this thing out to you i see paul r8 and chas linux and popey naked cook good to see you again dennis kelly kick -a -kick. <laughs> <laughs> hey jot i didn't pause on your name there sorry about that we tried to program it jim gregory hey pyrus rock access web and carly Sansarif in the chat room tonight. Come on, here we go. For the USB 2.0 hub. Will it be? What would you do with this? Plug in like seven USB flash drives yeah. and have an enormous amount of flash drives. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I love it for powering my, uh, my computer devices that are powered by USB because it doesn't require power from the computer. All right, it's speeding up, folks. Here we go. Alket, GWG, Andrew Jameson, whoa, I see whoa, you there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be fast. I can barely read them. You guys catch your names? Come on, Drawbot. You take a long time when there's this many people. The winner is... Diff. Good. <laughs> Diff good. Congratulations. Yay, you're the big, big winner. I got one of these for you. All you got to do is just yes. get on over to your email application. Make sure you're registered on the website as well, okay? Category5.tv. But get into your email. Email me yes. live at category5.tv. And when you do that, just tell me your real name, where we can ship that to. So that's your, uh, your full address. And probably include a phone number in there as well, just for the courier. Just in case. Yeah. Congratulations. And knowing our luck, we're sending it probably to some crazy... Where Where are you from, Difka? Yeah, where are and you? And am I even saying that? Maybe it's Diff G. Diff G. Diff G. Diff G. Who knows? All right. Congratulations. Yay. I'll watch for that email. Woo. Keep in mind, uh, you've got 30 days in order to claim your prize. So make sure that email comes to us within the next uh, 30 days. So, very good. Yay, cool. Our mobile site is up and running tonight, mm -hmm. m.cat5.tv. Now that you've got an iPod Touch, it's I got a know. camera, you can scan that code, it will bring it up, and you'll be good, good to go. Sweet. All right. I'm excited to use my iPod. I think it's even got a full charge. What? <laughs> I'll investigate that later. Commercial break. AKA oh, after we the show. One? Okay. I don't know. Uh, 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 what do you want to do? Just kidding. <laughs> lots happening. <laughs> Always lots happening here on Category 5. And did you know that Category 5.tv is a member, truly a member, of the Tech Podcast Network? If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, so. All right. Tonight... We got a well. We got a question. I, I guess you've got that question there. Uh, Pals ninety eight emailed and yes. uh, had this kind of intriguing question for me. So take it away, Hill. Let's tackle this, shall we? Is there any way to send pop up messages to any PC on a home network? Hmm. 
Well, what operating system are you using? Let's tackle them one by one. It doesn't say, so we're going to just have to start with, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Windows. We can handle that. All right. So I've got, we've got a couple systems here tonight that have Windows on them. Mm -hmm. I don't like to show them on the air because, you know, it <laughs> gives you that kind of bile taste in your mouth. But <laughs> <laughs> you've got your Windows laptop. Yeah, we're going to utilize do, that tonight. I've got the Windows broadcast system yeah. here. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, this is so that we can send notifications. So think about why this might be handy. And I suggested in the email that I sent out to you an hour ago, uh, for those of you who are registered for that, it, what happens if you're, you know, dinner's ready and your kids aren't on Facebook and you need to get a hold of them? <laughs> Not that that ever happens. You'll always get them on Facebook. But uh, yeah. imagine being able to pop up little windows on their computer to annoy them. That's funny. Time for dinner. Or whatever it could be, it could be helpful for other reasons. So this is we're looking at a way to do that without having to install something like an instant messenger okay. or Skype mm -hmm. or uh, Jitsi or something that allows you to use an external server. We're actually going to send messages directly to each individual computer. So on cool. Windows, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. So we've got two computers, one that's going to be sending the messages and one that's going to be receiving them. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend that the receiving one is the kids or whatever. In this case, it's your laptop. So the first thing that we need to do mm -hmm. is we need to uh, open RegEdit on your computer. So this is the one we're going to be sending messages to. And we need to enable something called Allow Remote RPC. So we go into H key Local Machine, System, Current Control Set, and then in control and then terminal server, you're going to see that key, allow remote RPC. And within that, there it is. It's up at the top there. The default is that it's set to zero. So we want to actually set that to one. It's going to now allow us to send messages to that computer. Hmm. Easy breezy, right? So then on the same computer, there's another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure, of course, that the firewall is going to allow us to send messages mm -hmm. through it. Um, so we need to bring up our control panel. And it's pretty easy to configure the Windows firewall. You can, you know, some people disable it if they've got a NAT, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it what would be considered the more proper way. I'm gonna go into the firewall settings and click on change settings, and then allow another program. And we're gonna just browse to the msg.exe application, which is uh, probably located if you're on Windows 7 like we are, it's going to be located in C colon slash Windows slash System32. So let's just find it here. And once you've got it, just push M and it jumps down. There it is. So, okay, we've clicked on that, hit Add and it's going to automatically assign defaults for your home network. You see that it's now got a check mark beside message utility and we're good to go. So now we've got the ability to send messages through the firewall on this particular computer. Good thing. So then we need to actually make some changes to the computer that we're going to be sending the messages from. Yes. In this case, I've only got a couple of Windows computers, so I'm going to actually do this <laughs> from uh, our broadcast system over here. Um, so again, I'm going to bring up some settings for this. I'm going to um, open Credentials Manager. And what we want to do is we want to add a Windows credential and add the computer name. In our case, it's laptop-win7, uh, and then enter the username and password on that computer that allows access to it. So once that's added, now... Uh, we're going to be able to send messages, so we can just enter this simple command, and I'm going to give that to you. It's going. Let's go back to the laptop and see what it did. There we go. Lo and behold, there's our message. So the command, mm -hmm. um, just so you have it, and I'm going to post this in the show notes for episode number 309 is simply msg, because msg.exe is the executable. Mm -hmm. You don't need to enter the path because it's in the path. Uh, msg space slash server colon the computer name laptop win7 mm -hmm. in this case. And then I put a, an asterisk, which means any user, because we've already set it up in Credential Manager, I could have put laptop there because laptop is my username on the, on the laptop. <laughs> right. oh. And then the, in quotes, the message that you want to send to that computer because the quotes will allow you to do things like um, have apostrophes and spaces mm. 
right? If they're if you didn't have those quotes, then you might break some stuff. So that's one way to do it um, on Windows, and we're not going to get too much into how to do things on Windows because um, we'd rather harness our energies elsewhere. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to direct you also, though, while we're on the topic of Windows, I'm going to just do a quick search here for an application called Stickies from Zhorn Software. Uh, it's zhornsoftware.co.uk. And this is another tool that I like to use on Windows, and this is a little bit different. It's a little more like an instant messenger in that it's an, it's an application that you install. It's not included with your system. It's free. Um, you can donate if you like it. But what's nice about it, once you download it and install it, um, see these are just like sticky notes. And you can right-click on the title of any one of them and send it to a friend. Oh. And so you configure your friend list, and your friend list is, in fact, IP addresses on your internal network. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that could work well for you too. And then it becomes um, something that's a little more robust than just sending a message that once closed, it's gone. gone With stickies, it's kind of like a, a bit more of a data-based system. It saves flat files, and you mm -hmm. can refer back to old stickies, and you can reply to them, and uh, you cool. know it's a little more advanced. So check that one out, zhornsoftware.co.uk slash stickies. Mm -hmm. And again, links are going to be in the show notes for episode number 309. Cool, dude. So that's Windows. All right. Shall we tackle Linux? Let's. Let's do this way. Okay, so this, this is where things get a little bit... All right, I've got to bring up a virtual <laughs> machine that I'm going to use as my other Linux computer here. That's a good idea. I'd like to show you a couple of different options here for our viewer who's, who's looking for a way to do this. Okay. So I'll just bring up a Linux machine. Cool. Use the delay as I do that. Yeah, it's oh, cool that good. we can do that for sure. Um, there are a couple of different tools that we want to look at tonight in order mm. to make this happen. So once I've got my virtual machine up, here we go. Okay. So the first one I want to show you is uh, called X Message, and it's included with your computer. While that's booting up, I'll actually show you it. Uh, so just go into your terminal and watch this. So the command is going to be X Message. Now lo notice that I'm doing this on the local host computer, right? Mm -hmm. We want to add a button that just says OK. So it goes just like that, nice and simple. And then we're going to actually locate it in the center of the screen because you want it to be noticeable. And here's where things are fun because you can actually have it load a file, but what we want to do is we want to say, no, we want to instead, I've just put a hyphen there to say, no, we're not going to do a file. We're instead going to do whatever is within this quotation. So we'll say, hello there, Hillary. Ooh. Okay. So then I hit enter, and there we go. Hey. Oh, and I guess I don't need file dash. I thought I did, because it actually appended that to the text. So let's try it without. Cool. It's possible they change some of the some of the uh, the way that it works, or maybe I'm just wrong. <laughs> well, that worked fine anyways without uh, it. So there you go. So cool. that's a you know a little bit of a pop up dialog on Linux, but it's not that pretty, and it's it's pretty old. <laughs> Pretty old school, <laughs> all right? I'm going to show you one that is much, much better and is is becoming kind of the de facto for Linux, especially if you're using, you know, anything that's semi-modern. Uh, we're going to do an apt, pardon me, sudo apt get update, get the latest repositories. Notice I'm doing this in the terminal because I don't want you to be afraid of the terminal. Nice and simple. We're going to look at uh, libnotify, a.k.a. notify send. So we're going to install that first because this particular one, notice that xmessage I didn't have to install. This one I do. sudo oh, okay. apt-get install lib notify-bin, I believe is the package. Hmm. There it goes. Yeah. Cool, very cool. Okay, so the following new package is going to be installed. It's going. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to type notify-send and then in quotes, again, hello. Hillary. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom out so that you see what actually happens here as soon as I hit enter. There it is. Ooh. See that? How great is that? That's and cool. And it vanishes after a little bit. Um, and it also has an X button so that you can close it. If you want it to last forever, see, watch, see, there it goes. It disappeared. Oh, yeah. You can actually command it to stay on the screen forever by setting the timeout to zero. And then 
it, it will never go away until you click the X. Ooh. There are a couple other nice little features. For example, if you add a secondary quote, so let's add a title by having another quote here, and we'll say, here's a title. And you'll see that it actually created here's two lines, okay, with mm -hmm. the two different quotes. Cool. All right, so you see the little formatting? Really, really simple. Okay, so now, that's all localhost, so it's all fine and good, but what we yeah. want to do is we want to actually be able to send Out these there. messages to another computer mm -hmm. on our LAN. Mm -hmm. Or, of course, you could do this through the Internet as well because we're going to do it through an ins a secure connection called SSH. So we want to make sure that we have open SSH server installed on the computer that we're going to be sending messages to. Remember that this is all happening on that computer. So I've installed Notify Send, a.k.a. libnotify-bin on the computer that we're sending the messages to. So I'm going to go. Uh, where was I? All right. Oh, yes. S open SSH. sudo apt-get install open ssh-server. Just make sure that it's installed. Mine says that it is already the newest version, so I'm good to go. All right. So now let's go to another computer. We're using yes. a virtual machine, but forget about the fact that this is a virtual machine, OK, because it's strict. It is exactly yeah. the same mm -hmm. as another computer on your network. You don't need to use a virtual machine. This could be another computer in another room. We're just using it totally. so that we can SSH in. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that computer to SSH into that computer. So SSH uh, Robbie is the username on the computer at, and then the IP address which we can obtain from that computer. I'm going to get rid of that dialog here. So from my destination computer, I can go sudo if config, and I get my IP address, which mm -hmm. is 10.0.0.70. OK, so back at my other computer, where I'm going to be sending it from, 10.0.0.70. It's going to ask me for my password if all is good. There we go. So now I'm actually connecting to that computer. Nice. And I have connected to its terminal. So if I do anything such as X message, watch what happens. X message, and then the format that we used before, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Button OK, and uh, we're going to use dash center. We're going to leave off file dash, and we're going to go test. And if I hit enter, watch what happens. We're going to get an error message here. Can't open display. What? What? But I thought I'd done it right. I've SSH'd in. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong here? Well, the fact is I, I'm connected to a terminal session on the computer. I'm not actually connected to the X session, which means the graphical mm. user interface. As you can see, I'm connected to a text-based right. connection to the computer. So I'm entirely working in the background, and the person who's sitting at that computer right now doesn't see that I'm connected. There's no um, obvious sign that I'm connected. Yeah. Um, so how do I get it to come up on their computer? Well, it's actually quite simple. We're going to use a command called display. Mm -hmm. And so all I need to do I'm going to bring back up that message, and I'm going to just add a space there. It's all capitals. Here's what we're going to do. Display equals colon zero. That's, our, that's probably the, the display that you're using. And when I do that, I'm going to move this virtual machine out of the way. And you, can, you know that that's still an SSH connection. Mm -hmm. I hit enter, and you notice there's my Ooh, test dialog on the computer. Is. Okay, See? And that can be whatever message. Hello, Hillary. And again, it's going oh. to show up on my X display because I've piped it through to display zero, which is, of course, you know, I've got a single X session uh, running, so it's golden. It's quite, mm -hmm. quite likely going to work for every case, or you can play around with it if you have any trouble. So let's go back to oh, cool. that same concept, that same premise, and say, okay, well, I'm SSH'd into that computer from my Linux computer to let's say another Linux computer in the house. So now I want to go display, all caps, equals colon zero oh, space. Okay, and now we're going to go notify dash send dash t zero. Remember what that does, Hill? Dash t zero. It yeah. makes it so that it never times out. So yes. it's always going to stay up until somebody presses X. That's right. I remember you saying that, but I got a grill ya. I got I a totally grill admit I blanked out for a second under pressure. <laughs> okay, now in the quotes, 
we're gonna go Hillary is awesome. Aw, she is. One of those state in the obvious kind oh, of pop ups come here. On. But very forgetful. <laughs> okay. That's possible. So wrap to the next line. Okay, what did I do here? I've got first quotes is gonna be what? Hillary is awesome. But it's gonna do what? It's gonna be the title line. Yes. And the second one is going to be the actual byline. The second line. So you notice, what did I start it with? It's gonna pipe it through to the X display of the system that I'm SSH'd into, mm -hmm. and it's gonna use notify send. So now, I'm going to again move this virtual machine out of the way, but I'm gonna hit enter on that virtual machine, which is SSH'd into my host, and there it is. There it is, people. And it will never go away until I click I the X click because X. I did the dash T zero. And you can set the timeout to something other than zero. You could set it to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You could set it to five minutes if you wanted to. I think it's in milliseconds. So you might oh, have to okay. do a little bit of math. math. <laughs> do a little Google. Get into Google and uh, see what they say. And there you have it. I mean, there's a couple of solutions for you. That's cool. SSH into the computer from Linux and you're gonna you're gonna be flying um, speaking of getting access to to Google to do the math did, were were you did you make it through the big Google outage of 2013 what Google outage it that's inconceivable the Google machine never dies. I didn't even know what to do I was like how do I find out news about the Google outage when Google is down Impossible. News.google.com <laughs> didn't work. Oh, brother. I'm not joking. I know. What do you do? Here we go. I was there, people. Whoa. Huh? It's not just it, you. It has never happened to me before. I, I, and so I checked the dot .com. It's not just Canada, either. Uh. What? And what else? Mm. So, okay, we know that Google also owns some other they do. big websites. They do indeed. Could it be that YouTube was also <gasps> down? No. What? But uh, here's some sad news for you. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah. Then how did you find out anything? I couldn't. I didn't even, didn't even go there. This is just bizarre. When did this happen? Where, that was uh, was Friday I? at about uh, quarter mm. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. No, they were down I'm, for a little while. I missed it. But I'm glad Google, somebody was... Basically, when Google goes it. down, novice users think the internet is broken. I would think that. I'd be like, oh, great, the world's over. The well, I tried dead. Google. Yeah. <laughs> it must be the apocalypse if Google it's is the down. the only logical explanation. <laughs> I tried Google and I couldn't get anything. I checked YouTube. What other websites do you... I went to Category 5 and it worked. So that was... Okay, so at least few. we know somebody's got everything. But all our analytics were down and our advertising wasn't working. <laughs> oh what my gives? goodness gracious. Hey, did you, uh, did you catch it when it happened? So we, uh, we literally need a t-shirt. I was there when <laughs> Google went down. When Google went down. Down, down, down. There you go. Well, Google is in a bit of a... Yeah. A little bit of a fight happening right now. I'm going to tell you all about it. These are the stop, top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Dun, 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 dun. A bitter row has broken out between Google and Microsoft over the Windows Phone YouTube app. Wait a second. Did this fight cause the downing of Google? Oh. Oh. Your yeah, Bing was up. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Google has blocked users from watching videos via the app, saying it violated its term of service. In May, Microsoft's first attempt at creating a YouTube app was blocked after Google complained it failed to display ads correctly. Okay. The companies agreed to work together to devise a new version, but Google insisted it was created using HTML5, Good. an open web coding standard, rather than code specific to the Windows Phone platform. Hmm. Microsoft said it was unable to do this, claiming that the issues were manufactured and Google was deliberately hindering the Windows Phone platform. In a yeah. statement, Google defended its action, saying, Unfortunately, Microsoft has not made the browser upgrades necessary to enable a fully featured YouTube experience and has instead re-released a YouTube app that violates our terms of service. It has been disabled. 
Ouch. Bing, ding, ding, zing, zingers. I didn't even... I don't even think that the official Google apps for iPhone are powered by HTML5. It makes sense. They're pushing that direction. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, obviously Apple has said no flash on the iPhone, so we got to find a different alternative. Yeah. But is Windows Phone actually using Internet Explorer 7? I don't know. we got to hash this out. It does seem a little bit fishy, though, doesn't it? That, that Google funny. seems to be a little bit kind of... Well, I did this. Why would they want to, to break some major functionality for the world's biggest internet-based broadcasting platform on a competing product? That makes Would they want to do that? Maybe it's a loophole. suspicious. Maybe it is. What we'll do you think? We'll see what plays out in the next little bit. Mm. All right, a Palestinian programmer has highlighted a flaw in Facebook's security system... How did he do it? He actually posted directly to Mark Zuckerberg's private wall. <laughs> That's funny. They're not even friends, folks. Khalil Shritek used a vulnerability that he discovered in order to hack the account of the Facebook founder and raise the alarm. Mr. Shritek said... He had tried to use Facebook's white hat scheme, which offers a monetary reward when you report vulnerabilities, but he had been ignored. He found a security breach that allowed Facebook users to post messages on the private walls of people who had not approved them as friends. It overrode the site's privacy features. In the post, he wrote first, uh, who, uh, he wrote, uh, mm -hmm. although his first language it says is is Arabic, uh, but he, he wrote in English saying, sorry for breaking your privacy and post to your wall, but that he had said that he had no other choice after being ignored by Facebook's security team who said that it was not a bug. Hmm. Well, they were pretty, fi pretty fast to fix it. They did fix it, and uh, they said that they would not be paying the hacker for reporting the problem because he didn't do it by the official channels that he was supposed to use, which, as he posted on Pastebin, they utterly ignored him. And well, I guess we... they get a lot of emails, and it's like, here's another guy who says, oh, yeah, I can post to Mark Zuckerberg's wall, Psh, well, whatever. Maybe he'll do it again, and then maybe he'll be compensated for his clear <laughs> ability to get around these things. I think it was pretty clever, and I do notice also that his... Facebook profile hasn't been suspended or anything, so I think they they must be being good about it. Um, and he certainly <laughs> was, you know, he was good about it. He didn't go and deface Mark Zuckerberg's wall. He could have. No, he could have he been could have. saucy. But nasty. it is post started with dear Mi dear Mark Zuckerberg. First, sorry for breaking your privacy <laughs> and post to your wall. Uh, and again, his first language is not English, but he says I has no other choice. <laughs> To make after all the reports I sent to Facebook team. It's taking the law, the internet law in your own hands. Mm -hmm. How would you do it? How would you report this crazy bug? I probably would have done the same thing. Would have done the same thing. You heard it here, oh, folks. Oh, boy. Hillary the hacker. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, developer Marcus Notch Person, who created the hit online video game Minecraft, says he has shelved plans for a follow-up after all. Hmm. The new hmm. project was provisionally titled Zero X 10 C. It was to be space themed game set in the distant future. Uh, Mojang, the company behind Minecraft, recorded. Um, oh, here, my goodness. Okay. 57 million pounds profit in 2012 and had wow. promoted Zero X 10 C during its development. Mr. Person blamed both the high levels of interest in the new game and code copiers for his decision to stop working on it. He said, I stopped developing 0x10c because everyone started caring about it before it was even done. I just want to make small <laughs> games and talk to other game developers about them. Forget all the hype. He then tweeted, it was much easier to have grand plans when nobody knew who I was. Hmm. You know, it's ex I went through the same thing when this show became very, very popular. I was like, <laughs> whatever. Just want to get no, back to No, come the on. Back don't to you the want roots. Don't you want your stuff to go well? He's just a traditionalist. I guess. Getting back to the roots of gaming. But it's gaming. like, okay, so you've built up this 
massive following and people want this game and of course you got to take the good with the bad people are going to try to control yeah. what you do and they're going to make their own suggestions mm -hmm. and they're going to post illicitly to your facebook wall <laughs> which has been patched by the way <laughs> but uh doesn't it seem like you know you want that kind of attention so then when he brings it out it. it's huge and that's great i don't understand i don't know oh well to mm. each their own hey well if you want to you know share category five with people and bring your friends then feel free we're okay we're down with that but i'm concerned that with the cancellation of minecraft's successor mm -hmm. what are 15 year old boys going to post on youtube from now on uh... i mean come on what's going to happen to youtube speaking of youtube <laughs> All right, this is crazy. As a content developer on YouTube, this is kind of scary. A London-based team of security researchers has exposed an internet scheme that is actually inserting unauthorized advertising into Google's YouTube. Spider.io discovered two particular programs which placed ads on YouTube's website when viewed by the affected PCs. It's said that the plugin had been promoted as a tool to download videos from the service. It said some directed users to malware. This is a quote. When a user who has installed these plugins visits YouTube.com, multiple display ad slots are injected across the YouTube homepage, channel pages, video pages, and search result pages. YouTube's terms of service uh, specifically say that you are not allowed to download rather than stream video mm. from YouTube. So obviously they're breaking rules to make this software anyway, but to inject advertising. So have you noticed that YouTube has got a bunch of new ads? Mm -hmm. Like that particular Snickers ad there that is completely not a part of YouTube. Mm. Here's my concern. I don't know if you know this or not, but YouTube actually pays a portion to help fund Category 5 and mm -hmm. all of the other shows that monetize YouTube's platform. And we're broadcasting live tonight on YouTube. We're there. We're a partner <laughs> with Google and YouTube. And, and that is very important. It helps yeah. to fund the show. So the advertising that we display on the, the website on YouTube pays for the broadcast that you see in part. So if this tool is now injecting advertising that is not a part of my partnership with YouTube, who is getting that generated yeah. revenue? It's not me. It's not the content providers. It's mm -hmm. not YouTube. It is some malicious some user or hacker company, guy. hackers or whatever. Clever plot, but they've been found out. They're going to have to shut it down. Google is going after any oh, company yeah. that tries Hello. to violate the terms of service in this way. But if you've noticed any kinds of additional advertising on on uh, YouTube and you're concerned about it, make sure you disable some of those plugins, especially the ones that claim to be able to download videos from YouTube. And they probably work, but it's against the terms of service right. and it's injecting advertising in there that does not pay the people who are delivering you the content. Sneaky. Kind of scary. Very scary. If you want more information, you can get these full stories online at our website at newsroom or at category5.tv slash newsroom. And our newsroom, of course, is researched by our amazing community of viewers and Roy W. Nash in particular. We thank you. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. Yeah. We use VTech cordless phones here at the show. We and we've got... Uh, NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi that powers our phone system. Yes. And the two companies have, in fact, teamed up for a back-to-school special at Walmart Canada. Good idea, yeah. So get on into the local Wally Walmart World. Canada store. And what they're actually doing is they're giving you a year subscription of phone services. This is the NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. You'll find out more at NetTalk. Uh, go to cat5.tv slash NetTalk is uh, probably a good way to do it cat5.tv slash phone and with this device you get unlimited calling anywhere in Canada or the cool, US so okay cool. with the bundle you get two cordless handsets oh, from VTech oh nice this is a back to school deal but of course meh, they don't check your ID you don't need a student <laughs> pass it's 80 bucks oh sweet and you get a full year service that's awesome unlimited long distance 
to Canada, U.S. So you think about it, um, kids are going away to school. Maybe they're going mm -hmm. uh, off to campus. Yeah. And you want them to be, able to be able to keep in touch, so you buy this for them. It's 80 bucks, and it gives them a full year's phone service and unlimited calling to you, and it's free to them. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost them anything. You don't have to pay long distance. They can call all their friends, and no problem. That's it's got 911 awesome. service, all that. Um, but also, get this. If you activate it in Canada, so you get it at Walmart yeah. Canada, and then you take it, so you give it to your kid who is going overseas to school. Oh. It's been activated with a Canadian phone number. Genius. Ah. Uh, they're in Scotland doing their schooling. Genius. You can call them as a local call. That's they cool. can call you as a local call. That's uh, awesome. I love the way the internet has revolutionized know, um, the way that we communicate. And NetTalk Duo is one of those products that just drives me mad yeah, with excitement. It's so, so cool. Uh, check it out. It is the VTech and, uh, and NetTalk uh, combined back to school deal look for the back to school uh, stand at Walmart, Walmart Canada you'll see it there for 80 bucks nice great deal sweet that's really cool yeah I like it I like it a lot well I think uh, that we should just you know jump right into questions because we've got Certainly. a lot of your questions to attend to I, I want to get into the mailbag and I want to chat with you in the chat room as well um, do pick up the phone if you'd like to give me a call it's cat5 uh, it's the cat phone 2545 cat5 tv of and course. you can ring me up. Beautiful. Well, All right, what do you got for him? First question we've got coming to us from Naked Cook. Hey, Naked Cook. Hi, Robbie. Or <laughs> Naked Cook. That too. We're not too sure which one it is. Could be. Hopefully you're a be. chef. <laughs> Who cooks with no clothes <laughs> on. Mm. Okay, here we go. Um, sorry I haven't been able to watch the show for a while. Um, mm. I do have one question and a request. I have now moved from Arch to a Debian-based OS. Can you guess nice. which one? Mm. Yes, Point Linux. Oh, ha <laughs> that was my next guess. I knew, I read mine. I love it. <laughs> and, uh, and he says, I'm really loving it. It's not as fast, but it just feels right. Anyway, uh, would you maybe mind doing a short tutorial on getting the fun stuff? I'm getting to know this uh, operating system. It was easy to install, mm -hmm. and although I moved the bottom panel to include a new dock, which didn't work, yeah. uh, it was hard to get things back to the way they used to be. So the question is, triple booting and removing one Linux OS. Is it just a matter of removing that OS from your hard drive and leaving Windows and the other Linux OS, or does Grub still have all three? I have removed Linux so many times that, <laughs> um, but that's not just from a dual boot. It's, is it easier to remove multiple OS or harder while keeping two operating systems? Well, I think the risk that you run when you remove an operating system that's installed in one of the partitions is that you could break the bootloader. So just be ready with maybe like a super grub disk uh, and you'd be able to um, re uh, restore the grub bootloader if okay. necessary. Um, but otherwise, um, just keep a good backup. You know what you can do and, and what I quite often do in a scenario like this is get a hold of Clonezilla. It's free. Clonezilla. You can boot it up from a CD that you've burned from an ISO. You can boot it up from a USB stick. Uh, Becca and I showed you how to, how to do that on episode number 307. Using Clonezilla, make an exact image of your entire computer with all of the partitions intact. That way you can delete partitions, you can mess things around, and if you break it, no problem. <laughs> you can restore back from the image, you're good That's to go. Smart. So you've got more than a backup, you've got all your partition tables, everything in a restorable format, so it's a fantastic way to, to approach it, because then you can mess around and you're not going to break anything, because mm -hmm. if you do, you can restore. Um, I would say that, uh, well, I mean, I've been using Point Linux for quite some time now. I love it. I'm going to point you in the direction of our website. Go to category5.tv. I'm going to show you a little trick here. Uh, you can use the search engine, but on our website, go to, for example, Season 6. We've done some things about um, Point Linux. So go to the show, Season 6, and just scroll down to Popular Keywords, and you should see in here Point Linux. And when you click on Point Linux, it will actually take you to any of the episodes where we featured Point Linux. Oh, very okay. cool. So the first one called Bringing, Bringing Back Classic Linux happened on episode two, pardon me, 290. Go take a look at that episode. We do cover getting some of the, the awesome stuff going. You know that you know, I'm a bit of an eye candy guy. Oh, yeah, look at that. I like it. Um, I like being able to 
navigate my computer in a in a productive and sane way and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. And so I actually show you how to do all that That's stuff. That's cool. And, uh, through the course of the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, look at each of those episodes and, and you can look at the show notes and start at a particular point in the episode if you like. And then if you have specific questions, if you're having trouble with a specific thing, you mentioned that you m made some changes to the panels and things and, uh, you know, maybe there's a specific issue that you're having there that you want to get, uh, get something working, then just let us know. With a bit more specifics so that we can we can really Tackle help with that. It. And again, I, I'd say, you know, I, I would like to get the show more into let's provide remote support. And, mm -hmm. and if that can be something that we can do with the show in such a way that viewers are not, you know, that it works with the yeah. flow of the show. Because we do need to also keep in mind that other people are watching who may not be affected by the same problem. So we try to keep a good pace to the show. Um, but if that's something that we can do, maybe, you know, if you have a specific question that has to do with the dock bar or something along those lines, we can remote in and see if we can service that for you, fix it, cool. and show everybody else how to do it. That cool. would be great. Thanks for the email. Mm -hmm. Do you have time for another one? Please. Yeah. Okay, this is a three-parter. All right. Hello, I just discovered your show today and I am completely inspired. Awesome. I decided to build my own computer rig and start broadcasting, but I had a couple of questions. All right. Number one, is Windows the only way to go if you're building a custom rig and don't want to spend an arm and a leg, hmm. i.e. for Mac computers? Is a Linux um, is Linux a viable alternative? What is your current broadcast computer setup? Okay, well... Let's tackle that one first. Yeah, um, there are a variety of different things that you could do. Windows is the most economical, I think, way to do things because of the fact that you don't have to get big, fancy mm -hmm. hardware, right? Um, you can get... I'm just bringing up a website here where I can find some alternatives. Because basically you're looking... You know, if you get a hardware unit that is specifically for broadcasting with SDI inputs and, and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, uh, not mentioning any names of products, you're going to pay, uh, you know... $10,000 mm -hmm. and then plus cameras and it, it can be astoundingly expensive. The nice thing about working with a Windows platform machine is that you can go with Telestream Wirecast which the professional yep. edition mm -hmm. of the software will run you about $1,000. There is a, uh, a, a, a very very reasonable version of the software available for you that is about $500. We can go to cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just a short link to get you there. Um, and you'll see uh, some of the options here, what this software provides. And this is, in fact, what we use for the show. It is, it and is. And just for the sake of um, those who are watching after the fact, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to try taking a screenshot of that. So smile. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I've actually taken a <laughs> screenshot of Wirecast on my screen over there. And if I remember to paste from my clipboard, then, uh, then we should be all right. Cool. But with this software, you're able to do full camera switching, everything on a Windows or Mac platform. And, and Windows is cheaper than Mac because it's non-proprietary hardware. So we right. built an i7 um, 2600K, I believe, uh, computer. It's a decent system, but it's not over-the-top expensive, um, and it works really, really well mm -hmm. with what we do. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Does that help at all? You do need a lot of power, and uh, that's not a Wirecast issue. That's not anything at all. If you're going to be doing any kind of HD video production, you have to have CPU, memory, and really good hard drive throughput. Mm -hmm. If you if you've got a little 5400 RPM <laughs> laptop, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And people complain and say, "Oh, well, Wirecast is slow, or it can't, it buffers, or no, no." But if you are creating a bottleneck by having an insufficient um, resource yeah. pool to give Wirecast, it's a, like we're doing HD video. We're doing. We've got monitors all around me. I, on, we've got on. everything is running from one system: camera, 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 sound, audio. I'll I'll put our chain of uh, how things work up on the website on episode 309. Um, we've got a monitor out there for Heather to use so that she can see yeah. the show as it's happening. <laughs> um, so that you know, because we're behind a whole bunch of stuff. Those of you watching backstage pass can see we're actually kind of blocked in here. Yeah. <laughs> so all this is done from one system. It takes a lot of power. So, so that's where. This is interesting because this kind of leads into it. why mm -hmm. did the, you then choose the Thermaltake chassis? chassis? Yeah, uh, the Thermaltake Zazer 6 was our first really high you know, quality 
chassis that we put into the studio and it's right in front of us here and it's running the demo system so that's the system that we do all of our uh, all of the on-screen display hmm. with then we've got the uh, thermal take level 10 snow edition which you know if you if you look back at some of the old episodes you'll know why we went with that route it is very roomy it mm-hmm. has it's lightweight it's very solid and it's a fantastic chassis for what we do it's got a lot of room to be able to put in extra cards we put in a pretty big motherboard in there and here's the kicker it also has a carrying handle mm-hmm. and that is specifically <laughs> something that we wanted in our wire cast box because we wanted to be able to take it from place yeah, to place yeah for sure mm-hmm. So that's that's a big thing too, and we wanted it to be solid enough that we weren't going to have any trouble with moving it around. You don't want it to fall apart on you. (laughs) It's the last thing you need. The other thing about the thermal take uh, chassis, plural, is that they have incredible cooling systems. So everything is liquid cooled here. It's all done by thermal take, and um, and not only that, but the chassis do they do have some giant fans on them, and they. keep the, the systems running very, very cool, which increases performance, which allows us to do the show without any kind of issues. Because we had win, those win. in the past. I mean, we, we <laughs> learned from our, our growth. I won't yeah. call them mistakes. It was, uh, we've done everything that we've done with a, a budget sure, and a, you know, a shoestring, sure. and we've grown as we go. And so it's been an exciting process, and that's kind of how we make our decisions, is what's going to work best for us it, within an economical standpoint, but also doing a good job at what we do, so... Very if I if I can just take this call, we have somebody here on the line. Thank you for calling. Hello, Robbie. Hello. Who's this? Hello? Hello. Oh, no. We established who I am. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Cat phone. Oh. Please call back. You have a few minutes. Yeah, you got a couple minutes to call back. Maybe Maybe we'll hear from you again. Okay. Um, I, hope, I hope that that helps. That was good info. And then j- just the last thing, this is a tip for shooting. Um, this is I forgot to say this email's from Corey. And okay, so Corey. Corey's going to be shooting piano playing and wants an overhead oh, cool. shot. So do you have any okay. recommendations on a camera or camera stand that he should be using to get that? Okay, can we come right back to your question about a stand because we've got another oh. call here. Hello. Hello, Robbie. It's Robert Gorzinski. I just dropped out before. Ah, Robert Gorzinski calling from uh, Australia. Yes, that's right. Nice to hear from you. I just like, thank you. I just like to say um, hello to you and Hillary. Hello. And oh. just like to say what a fantastic job you are all doing, and appreciate it very much. Thanks, Rob, and we appreciate your your supporting us as well uh, here at the show. Uh, means a lot, and we love having you as a part of the community. We do. So. You are so uh, fantastic. And I know that Hillary is going to enjoy some awesome music on her new iPod. Thanks, man. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Okay, see ya. Bye. Bye. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so thanks for the call, Rob Gore. Love it. Appreciate it. Love it. Um, what are we going to do to, my, uh, to put a camera on? Above the hands, the magical hands. The piano. Yeah, you need kind of, uh, you need... You, you kind of need a wide angle, eh? And it has to be such high quality that you can see mm-hmm. the fingering. Because if you're all up and down the keys, it, it, it's got to work, right? Yes. So you want to go with something that's going to do HD. Yes. Um, that can be uh, like a camcorder. We're using an HFR10 from Canon. It's cheap. It gets the job done. It's HDMI output. It goes to HDMI input through a Blackmagic Intensity Pro. It, which is you know a cheap card that you can put into the computer yeah. and it, it allows us to do it. So it's not the best quality as he, you know you can see it's not like a, a twenty thousand dollar camera, but it's not a twenty thousand dollar camera. No, you're looking at it. You know if you budget five hundred dollars, you're going to be able to do it. And For sure, you're good to go. Um, you can do webcams if you want. You can get a good HD HD webcam for sub $100, but by doing that, you are going to have to invest in lighting because webcams, yes. if you don't have good lighting, they're going to clock down the frame rate and you're going to lose uh, you're going to lose motion yeah. because the frame rate goes down in order yes. to compensate for the underexposure. So, get something like a consumer hand camera that is going to be high definition, uh, high definition, and can be elevated. How can we put it up in the air? Um, 
Heather, can you take a shot of just our stand? And you'll see that we use microphone stands here at the we show. We do. We don't use great. tripods. We use these microphone stands, and with <laughs> those, um, we put a little, um, you know, quarter-inch uh, threaded nut on there, so that or uh, bolt, and it holds it onto the stand. Um, and I've been developing something here, Special which is a, a five, a four-head tripod mount on a microphone stand. And this is kind of this is going to be our baby. So this is these are Microsoft Life Cam Studio cameras. Mm -hmm. And we can, here's the thing, we can make them move around however we want, okay? But because it's on a microphone stand, look at what we can do. It's, it's got a boom, it's got a swivel. See how the swivel works here? With that, so now you've got the ability to do any kind of shot that you need to do. You can get these things up pretty high on your piano. Maybe you want to get something like this and get it right up there, right? So that might be an option. Microphone stands are excellent for that because of the fact that you can move it around and, and extend it. And, Very cool option. Mm -hmm. Creative a option. A little, little bit more maneuverability than a tripod, I'd say. True. Well, investigate those options mm -hmm. and let us know how you fare, and maybe we'll tune into your show very soon. That sounds good. <laughs> I will uh, post any information that I have yeah. for you, links to product that we use to build that kind of stuff. Uh, in the show notes for episode number 309. Have a great week. It's been nice having you here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Hill. No problem. It's been a slice, Thanks, guys. Heather. We'll see you later. Have a great week. See ya. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.